and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. It is Tuesday, March 5th, our top stories for the day. Wes is going to do one about Mueller investigation, or Mueller, sorry, investigation. Thank you, 2. Will. 2.0. <laughs> yeah, we, we, thank God we've been getting that pronunciation corrected, you know, because that's important. Uh, Mueller investigation 2.0. This time, Pelosi's in charge. Yeah, more like a uh, biased 2.0. <laughs> uh, Pat's going to do one about Leaving Neverland, a documentary that's as gross as advertised. Yeah, if you like pop music or children, you might just want to skip my segment because <laughs> yeah, I'm going to yes, get yeah. into it. Yeah. Don't let uh, don't I'm let your d- kids uh, sleep in the same bed with an adult people. Yeah, especially one that recently changed his color and has a <laughs> face that looks like a butcher got after it. Right. Yeah. And where's like, yeah, glove. don't do any of those things. Yeah. Rhinestones. Sounds. Just adults. Yeah, we'll, just adults. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll get into it. Uh, I'm going to do one about a girl who threw a phone at her mom's head for not taking her to yoga class. And uh, Mark's going to take us through a lightning round of other headlines. Take it away, Wes. All right, you guys ready for another never-ending in- Trump investigation? Uh, doesn't doesn't matter. Wait, wait. Yeah. Is is isn't there one still going? Still going. Yes. There's one still going, but there's a yeah, new one. Mueller, the Mueller Mueller investigation wraps up like in the next month or so. I say we start a new one. Why not? Yeah, well, that's what the Dems are doing. So, well, if you thought liberals whining about an investigation they can't control, uh, the Mueller investigation, it was annoying. Just wait, because now that the Dems have the majority in the House, they are ready to flex their non-existent muscles and pedal their one speeds just that much faster. I have a one speed <laughs> bike. What do you mean? Yeah, well, you're a liberal. You're a hipster. Yeah. 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 Lip, lip cut. So yesterday, <laughs> yeah, yesterday, the Dems <laughs> unleashed this new investigation into President Trump and are going to look into not just uh, the Russian collusion, but his businesses, family, campaign and entire administration. And the House Judiciary Committee is demanding lots of paperwork from over 80 sources of uh, people and organizations. So, like, they, But isn't that exactly what yep, the M- yep, Mueller yes. investigation Sounds did? similar, Will? I, I don't care yeah. what they do like or the results as long as the P tape gets exposed and we find out <laughs> that he's actually 282. <laughs> you think, dude, he's not 282. He's north of 300 pounds. You think he's north of 300 pounds? He's north of fucking 300 pounds. Hillary paid for that dossier. Just remember that. He's 6'3", and he's a fat as shit. <laughs> so so uh, J- Judiciary Chairman uh, Gerald Nadler, sounds like a real fun guy, said this, quote, Nadler. Over the, uh, over the last several years, President Trump has evaded accountability for his near daily attacks on our basic legal, ethical, and constitutional rules and norms. So... He's OK, but but he, what's yeah, yeah, of course he has, dude. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like, oh, all right. Will's in uh, Reno right. and his audio is showing up on our mics here in Austin. Yeah, right now. yeah he's angry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, he's been trumping around. Yeah, he's been right. He's been being Trump. Yeah. Are we are, is, is America going to accept the fact that this motherfucker is who he is <laughs> and he's in the office that he's in? Or is we're we just going to like keep. Keep pretending like it's not fucking happening. Not 49% of them will. I've accepted Ooh, okay. it. I'm just kidding. I mean, there's another election they could just show up for. And yeah. Right. Yeah. But you're right about the Pete tape, Mark. Let's get something good and productive out of this. Mm-hmm. Right. So the investigation is going to cover three main topics. Um, obstruction of justice, abuse of power, and public corruption. Uh, corruption. Wait, and at wait, first, Corruption? Corruption. <laughs> corruption. And at first mm-hmm. glance, this all sounds like a big political tool to sway uh, voters. Like, right? You know, it's just 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 get real. Any of Trump's base uh, really going to believe an investigation led by Democrats into their fearless leader? Can you right. say uh, biased? A little yeah. bit, maybe a little bit. I don't know that any of Trump's base believes anything that isn't coming direct out of Trump's mouth, whether it's Dems or Republicans. Well, you, yeah, you, but have have these idiots considered how this is going to look come next election time? Okay, so he's we're going to be in the second multi-year Trump investigation come the next elections. Mm-hmm. What, how do these losers think they're going to look? Like, if they haven't removed him from office by then, then it's a liability. So they're going to look like idiots. Well, if they don't find anything in four years investigating, that's not that's not a great look. I think that they should probably just right. focus on finding a good candidate. Right, yeah. Like, there's another election soon. Yes, right. exactly. But whatever. So uh, the three chairmen of the House Intelligence, Foreign Affairs and Oversight and Reform Committees are demanding every correspondence that Trump had with Putin over the phone and in person and want to speak with the interpreter who sat in on the meetings with the two while the media was not president uh, present. So just to, to find, you know, anything they can. It's just it's it was weird that, that he just took the interpreter and solo with Putin. But why? Well, no. I don't know, because what, what are you going to talk about in front of Putin that someone else can't hear? I mean, am I might. Uh, you're the president of the United States talking to the president of Russia. Plenty. Yeah. 
mean, am I wrong plenty. on timings here? Or are they just conceding that he's going to win the second election? Because by the time this thing concluded right. and they drug it through the, the process, uh, he wouldn't get impeached before the election. So no, absolutely are they not. just are they just considering the fact that they can't beat him? Is they just want to have something that they can point to and be like, he's still under investigation, everyone. Because yeah. when the Mueller investigation comes right. out and finds there's nothing, they still want to have something to point to is my theory. Yeah. Did, nah, nah, I got a I got a theory about this whole thing. I think this is Pelosi hanging AOC out to dry because AOC is going to be the face of this thing, right? She's on the oversight committee. And I think that this is the Democratic Party putting her out there because she wants to take it on. But this is this is this has the potential to blow up in their faces so easily. You think Pelosi that, wants uh, AOC to fail in public? Yeah, she fucking hates yeah. her for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Because she's because she keeps it tight and she's young. And she's can oh, dance man. Good. So many reasons. Those are a lot of the reasons. But there's others, too. All right. So in response by White House Press Secretary uh, Sarah Sanders, she says, quote, Chairman Nadler and his fellow Democrats have embarked on this fishing expedition because they are terrified that their two year false narrative of Russian collusion is crumbling. The Democrats are not after the truth. They are after the president. So, yeah, it, it does sound to me like a big smear campaign to rile their base up, basically. I mean, that tactic could work. It kind of fucked, I think, Hillary with the timing of the FBI investigation. So but. Theoretically, it could work, but I think the second investigation, this one that's about to start, if they don't have a lot of like concrete evidence right up leading to the election, it would actually backfire. Well, well and also evidence th- th- yeah. of what he's done while he's in office. Right, right, exactly. They're gonna they're gonna concentrate on the fact that he's a bad guy. He paid off the women. You can probably prove that. Didn't shit. pay workers. Right, didn't exactly. pay taxes. All that shit, but nothing. Had a lot of stinky sex. Yeah, yeah. He, bad, poor. Yeah. Had a lot of bad sex. Yeah, before he short, was president. Short term. Like, five minutes. Char- sex wrong. Attack his character. There was an independent <laughs> council investigation during the Clinton years from the Reagan administration. Just to give you guys a little yeah. context for how long. These things can last. I know yeah. that this is different because that's the Mueller investigation. It's the independent counsel. But Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, it, it's only going to matter for like his memoirs and stuff 20 years from now. This does this one. Yeah, Trump's memoirs. Yeah. Yeah, well, Long story history. short, Trump is qu- calling it a hoax. He's threatened uh, presidential harassment against the Dems, whatever that means. But that's not a real thing. Well, but it's, yeah. funny, it's <laughs> a funny accusation. Whatever. He's threatening presidential <laughs> harassment. Yeah, I don't know if that's Stop real or not. It. It's got to be some kind of law. <laughs> Leave but, me alone. You got that from King, Kim Jong Un. <laughs> just he's like, he's like, just threaten presidential harassment on him. Yeah. Anyway, going to the internet, uh, Aver 2 says Trump cheats on uh, first wife with second, on second with third, then on third with porn star and playmate. Then Trump psychophant Matt S- Gates. Sycophant. Yeah. Sycophant Matt Gates uh, Gats says that uh, having affairs is what shows how truly sleazy Michael Cohen is. No doubt Matt failed the class on hypocrisy, avoidance, and sycophant school. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. This guy failed the class on realizing that all the fucking politicians he votes for fuck people outside their marriage, too. <laughs> That's true. A lot of people on Capitol Hill have, uh, you know, hit up the escorts, the high class high end escorts. escorts. Yeah, you want to be a high or their escort. own fucking staff or their own staff. Yeah. That's where Places you go. Cesspool. Yeah, that's true. We interned on Capitol Hill. There was some interesting. No one made women a pass there. at me, though. Some, well, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Hey, look, Michael Jackson's a sick fucker. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we kind of knew that he was a sick fucker, but now we really know that he's a goddamn sick fucker. Something wasn't right about that guy. And now we have the benefit of hindsight and uh, the victims who have become adults to get in the nitty gritty of what this sexual monster did. Uh, so the documentary Leaving Neverland premiered on HBO on Sunday night, part one, Monday night, part two. Uh, it was the wide release after the film had showed at Sundance and it pretty much chronicles the uh, interviews or long-term in-depth interviews with James Safechuck and Wade Robeson, who uh, were groomed by Jackson from their respective ages of seven and nine. They're fucked by him. Well into their They're fucked by him teens. from the ages of seven yeah. and nine. Yeah, Trigger right. warning. Yeah. I'm going to gonna, mm. get into some of the horrible, horrible details of what Safechuck and Robeson had to endure over the course of several years. So if you don't want to hear about how sick the King of Pop was, Fast forward. By the way, the Catholic Church is loving this documentary. Yeah, the Catholic Church. This is huge for them. <laughs> yeah, they are. So Jackson liked buttholes. He was a big butthole guy. Uh, these poor boys essentially were, when they were kids, asked to bend over and show their buttholes to Jackson before and after he masturbated them with his mouth, oh. right. et cetera. Oh, Wow. Yeah. He liked to finish uh, by staring into their buttholes and jerking off on all fours after this, they both. The, hey, guys, I got I got a one liner for you. This documentary really should have been called Finding Netherland. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would have been good. Will. Leaving Netherland. But finding, yeah, no, finding. <laughs> uh, during the doc part two, they show the interview, the infamous Michael Jackson interview where he's he's giving a straight to camera 
uh, soliloquy about how the feds came in and took pictures of his penis and his lower knee, right. <laughs> lower region. And underneath that, it said live from Neverland Ranch. And I was just thinking if you were Johnny Cochran, Michael's attorney, maybe you don't have that little cry on at the bottom that says Neverland Ranch. You named your fucking ranch Neverland and you have children sleeping in your bed for upwards of a year at a time. It's a fucked up documentary yeah. and people that still support Michael Jackson and, and deny that he was a pedophile are insane. They're literally insane. Yeah, they're like flat earthers. They're, yeah, they're they're not intelligent people. <laughs> yeah, so uh, according to Save Chuck and Jackson, uh, or according to Save Chuck, Jackson conducted drills to prevent anyone who uh, witnessed the alleged abuse uh, from figuring out what was going on. So he would run drills with, this is from, from Safe Chuck, quote, he would run drills with me where we'd be in a hotel room and he would pretend like someone was coming in and you had to get dressed as fast as possible without making any noise. <laughs> he had a bodyguard, oh he had like a bodyguard come outside, oh, wow. he's like, it's your mom! The pedophile drill? Yeah, yeah the pedophile holy drill. Shit. He would also, he had a series of doors, he was a big door guy in his Neverland house ranch, so he essentially would not necessarily always lock doors, but he'd shut a ton of them. Some of them were triggered by bells. He so had if buttons you were... like that guy at, at Fox News. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you might be asking yourself, how could this happen? Like, how could these parents allow their Matt children Lauer. to spend Matt months Lauer. and months alone with Jackson sleeping in his bed? And it's simple. He's a master manipulator. Uh, he would dangle fame and fortune in front of these families, and he would he would do things like come over and sleep at the family's homes uh, under the ruse of him hiding out from celebrity life. So, like, Look, the biggest fucking pop star on the planet is like, hey, it's Michael Jackson. Can I come sleep over at your house tonight? Yeah. It all boils down to one thing, money. I mean, um, yeah. Harvey Weinstein didn't get caught for like 30 years. It's all money. Yeah. It's 100 percent money related and fucked up. Parents. Yeah. If you watch, you're right. Well, if you watch the documentary, the parents were enamored with the money. They were getting free trips. They were getting whatever they wanted. They, they liked the fame and the money. It was all about money. I, I, I agree. It was all about money. But I do think that Jackson was a master manipulator in, in that he was able to build a plausible deniability for the parents where they were like, oh, well, he's just, you know. Yeah, and I mean, at the time though, he his his personality or his like celebrity was so huge. Yeah. He was, I mean, he was so, like, the biggest. He also had right. a he also he had a, a fucking pop. he also had a fucking team of people that were manipulating these people as well oh. that were way into it also. Oh yeah, it's not Michael Jackson. Uh, Wade, Wade, no, Wade, Wade was crying himself to sleep before he met Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. That's he's he's just sad because he's not around Michael tonight. That's why he's. Crying I'm not defending himself. Michael Jackson. I'm just saying there's a lot more people involved. Look, the Jackson family Mike, came uh, out. Everyone's and said, complicit. Yeah. All of his like work. Workers, his maids, his yeah. bodyguards, yeah. his fucking managers, his lawyers, everyone is yeah, involved. How the his fuck did Johnny Cochran yeah. take that His case. family that wants to sue everyone. The family came out and said this, quote, Michael was subjected to a thorough investigation, which included a surprise raid of Neverland, still a bad name, uh, ranch and other properties, as well as a jury trial where Michael was found to be completely innocent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. that's because he was the biggest fucking pop star in the world and he groomed these kids and ultimately... Yeah. You know, was the most powerful guy on the planet to these children and their families. Pretty sure he had some lawyer money uh, ready to go for that. He was like so. giving kids uh, wedding rings, like wedding yeah. them. It's fucking disgusting. He married one of the kids. Yeah. It's gross. So it's, wow, it's pretty easy to manipulate a seven-year-old. Yeah. But so Michael Jackson's yeah. a confirmed piece of shit. He's yeah. a confirmed mm -hmm. piece of shit. Let's take it to the internet real quick. Natalie Kathan says, "I love Michael Jackson. I won't be watching <laughs> this documentary. He was an <laughs> easy target. Target emoji. Really." And people yeah. made claims for the money in 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Yeah. Natalie Kathleen is very good looking, but very stupid. She's like an uh, she's like an ostrich. Just yeah. buries her head in the sand. <laughs> yeah, she just wants to listen to Thriller free of guilt. <laughs> just just stupid. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hang on. Before we move on, that's a good point. Um, I was about to rebuy Michael Jackson Dance Party on the Connect on the Wii Connect. I don't know because it's is a phenomenal video. game and it's and it's great exercise. I can't do that now, but although I bet it's a, it's going to have like a great sale. Like I bet I bet you can get it for a good seven ninety nine. That was a fun game. It was fun. All right, let's move it on to another girl who uh, has a hard time understanding the world, just like that commenter. <laughs> um, so in August 2017, a 30-year-old Potomac, Maryland woman named Holly Albert allegedly threw a phone at her mom's head for not giving her a ride to yoga class. And now she's been arrested for the same offense in February 2019, so like 18 months later. Yeah, it just took that long, but yeah. Also, if you're yeah. if you're from the DMV like we are, and you hear someone's from Potomac, Maryland, you immediately know that they're loaded. Very loaded. Yeah, they got money. They got money. She she can afford to live at home as as a 30 year old. That was daughter. a heavy phone. Uh, that was a gold plated phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Holly, who is charged with second degree assault for throwing her home phone at her mother's head, was reportedly living at home, unemployed 
and needed to go to yoga for, quote, meditative purposes. Doesn't sound like a rich girl at all. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, The mom called the cops with the phone that hit her. And when the police arrived on the scene, the mother was completely covered in blood because the enormous home phone had split the shit out of her head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Those home phones are big. Was it a Motorola Razor? No, no. It was a home phone. I know. Come on, though. (laughs) Like like something that sits on the counter. Yeah. Real real, real Kate Barstool joke there, Pat. (laughs) As side note, as somebody who never thought they'd be into yoga, but I am for this weight loss contest we're doing, just buy a fucking DVD, you bum. Jesus. Holly's a real, real, real winner. Yeah, I mean, um, they, I'm sure they have like uh, several rooms in the house that serve as like personal gyms. She could do a DVD for. Right, exactly. She clearly has a crush on the instructor. It's the most affluent <laughs> town in the United States, according to CNN Money. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, yeah. she, she, meditative purposes means I uh, want to have sex with someone at the class. Yep. Right. Yeah, I love the instructor. All right, back to the story. The funny thing here is that Montgomery County, Maryland's are the ones pressing charges. Uh, so the mom has already come out with a press release defending her daughter, even though she's the victim of the crime. Uh, the mom states, I freely state that at all times since those events up to the present, Holly Ann has lived with me and her father without any incident or reason whatsoever that could cause either of us to fear for our safety or well-being. So, wow, uh, I think wow. that sounds like that sounds like a load of horseshit. That's bullshit. Uh, They're scared of she her. Can, yeah. yeah Holly Ann exactly. was, was standing over them when she wrote that. They're scared. They're scared <laughs> yeah. shitless of her. You better, Holly Ann you better write it. these fucking you see how heavy that phone is in the corner. <laughs> and she goes on about a bunch of other shit. She doesn't want to have to find other living arrangements. She's unemployed and we pay for everything. So judge. Yeah. And uh, also she's she says she knows Holly Ann very well. And I'm confident that she intends to appear at every court date necessary to bring this matter to a close. No shit. You have to drive her to court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Holly yeah. Ann's just waking her up to a dial tone every morning. Just to scare her. <laughs> <Ding>! <laughs> All right. Taking it to the internet. Holly Ann, by the way, she has to go to court on March 19th. She swaps all the phones with rotary phones. <laughs> yeah. They're heavier. I don't yeah. get you. I'll knock yeah. you out. <laughs> taking it to the internet. Zach Santa Cruz says, why do they have to mention she's unemployed? What does that have to do with throwing a phone at her mom? It's hilarious, Zach. Kind of has everything to do well, with it, Zach. Yeah, yeah, it has a lot to do with it. it has Zach, a lot Zach to do with must it. must not. You're be thirty. Or, you're yet. thirty. You're from the most affluent fucking town in America. You were probably given everything. You have the best education. You're unemployed. Don't have a fucking driver's license or a car. That's why Zach. Zach's uh, either un- <laughs> unemployed currently or has been in the past and is standing up for the wrong unemployed. She's not underemployed, here. Zach. Yeah. She's never had a job. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Never worked on purpose. Uh, and then Cynthia Molina. She says this, if I had an unemployed 30 year old kid raise a hand or weapon at me, they better make sure I stay down because their <laughs> ass would be mine. She'd have to call 911 on me. No way I'd let that shit happen, which thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia. Round of applause, That's how you're supposed to deal with a 30 year old loser who's throwing a fucking phone at your head. Yeah. Cynthia. That's awesome. I wish Cynthia was my mom. That's awesome. Living on the edge of a lightning bolt. Oh, yeah. So Luke Perry passed away on Monday at the age of 52. He suffered a massive stroke over the weekend and never recovered. Mm -hmm. He was surrounded by loved Mm -hmm. ones, including at least two of the hot women he banged in his life, uh, his ex-wife and his fiance. I'm sure there were a lot of hot women. That he yeah, oh my just God, a he few. Was such oh, yeah. a good-looking so guy. So many women. What a run. Yeah. What a run. 90210 and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie, were both fucking fantastic. <laughs> and as kids of the 90s, we all appreciate your great work. Rest in peace, Luke Perry. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Pope Francis has announced that he will open up the Vatican's secret archives, uh, specifically related to the... Uh, Papiacy of Pope Pius the Twelfth, who is called like Hitler's Pope. Um, mm. He's <laughs> he was the Pope during the World War II era, and he's been accused of uh, failing to speak up about the Nazis' persecution of the Jews. So uh, Pope Francis is like Michael Jackson movie. Let's talk about this uh, Jew hating stuff. Anything to deflect. So he opened up. He's opening up. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Leaving Neverland? You guys heard of Smollett? <laughs> yeah. Jussie Smollett? Yeah. Jussie Smollett. <laughs> um, my question is how many sections are there in this goddamn secret archives, by the way? The Vatican makes the Citadel from Game of Thrones look like a kid's bookstore. It's like there's just, a, there's just like a dozen dudes locked in the secret archives just constantly weeping because of all the despicable shit they're covering 
throwing up in there. Yeah, it's like that shit in Game of Thrones where they all like have like the, like the chains on them yeah. or the lot, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, the maesters. <laughs> yeah, the, maesters. <laughs> the sparrows you're talking about. <laughs> sparrows, yeah. Uh, Steven Spielberg <laughs> would prefer if all Netflix films would please be treated as TV movies uh, and only be eligible ah, this for is Emmys bullshit. and the yeah. Golden Globes, not his super sacred Oscars. What an asshole. What the fuck? Yeah. They shoot the same format, the same yeah. page length, the same fucking cameras. They use the same crew. It's a You're movie. a fucking right. asshole. It's a movie. It's a fucking movie. Same budget, same actors, yeah. uh, same actor pool. Uh, and, you know, that's what he would prefer. And I would prefer if he would stop making Indiana Jones movies because there's another one that he announced for 2021. Maybe so, stop just yeah. being associated with movies and actually fucking direct some in the in the near future. You're talking about producing movies. Producing, producing movies. Yeah. Associated, produ- producing, whatever. You yeah. Know what I great director, not so great at talking about the award shows. Yeah, I was going to make a kid diddling joke, but I won't throw that at Steven Spielberg. (laughs) No, Uh, no. no. All right, and I will end with a good one. Uh, A lighthearted story to take you into your day with a smile. After going missing for nearly two days in a wooded area of Northern California, about 200 miles northwest of Sacramento, two young sisters aged eight and five were found safe on Sunday. It was uh, footprints, granola bar wrappers, and a lot of luck that allowed for (laughs) Caroline and Leah Carico Carico, to be found by a rescue team that searched for them on foot and via helicopters for over 44 hours in like impossible find. Yeah. Yeah, like a happy version of Hansel and Gretel. Exactly. It was just like Hansel and Gretel. They just walked into the woods or what? Yeah, I, well, yeah, so they are safe and sound and won the shit out of that hide-and-seek game. Oh, but, um, okay. shh, yeah, no, they just walked out into the woods. Okay, good. Gotcha. Yeah, but they're, they're safe, so good, good, happy good. and healthy. Good, good. Uh, and that's going to do it for Hard Factor. Make sure to get out and leave a five-star review on iTunes early and often this week. I know I threatened this time last week that the Friday show was in jeopardy and everything ended up working out, but this time I am even more concerned. Oh, no. Uh, and one thing to note, yeah, we only have like 11 mm. reviews, uh, and one thing to note, we will be doing a live power hour on March 15th, which is a Friday, so if you don't want to miss out on two straight weeks of Friday morning podcasts, you need to vote because we're not going to do one. The, to the, get the, those reviews in, get baby. Get those reviews yeah. in, baby. Yeah, hop um, Yeah, you need to get those in now. Uh, we have been loving all the support this year, so thank you very, very much, and most importantly, have a great fucking day.